the AF button here, focus. It's incredible. Video mode, it's automatically focusing on the eye there. Hit record, now I'm recording video. Focus on the background. All right guys, so in this quick video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the Canon app for the smart device so you can remote control the camera. In my case, I'm using an iPhone 12 mini. Pretty much most Apple devices will work the same. I don't have an Android device to test with at the moment. So this is the procedure for using an iPhone or an iPad should be pretty much exactly the same. So anyways, if you go into this little connection option here, you have the connect to smartphone slash tablet. So if you see here, I already have my iPhone connected here and that this is new, this popped up after I connected my iPhone. So originally that was not there. So I'm just gonna remove that though. Let me just go up here and go to edit, click on that and then delete connection information, click okay. And there we go. So this is what you should expect to see. So I'm just gonna add a device to connect to. Once the camera is, is paired, it stays connected even when off to stop communication, you must set the camera to airplane mode. So to get to airplane mode, all you have to do is use your pointer finger on the top dial here and just turn to the right and that'll bring you right to three. And that'll bring you into airplane mode. You can go in there and you can turn that on or off. Now, if you turn that on, that'll shut off the Bluetooth. What this means is the Bluetooth connection on the camera will stay on even if the camera is off. So you definitely do want to put the camera into airplane mode when not in use. Otherwise, it's probably going to trickle drain the battery, I'm guessing, based on this warning message. So I'm going to click OK. Now, this is really cool. They make it really easy for you to find the app. So if I just bring, open my iPhone here. All right, so here's my camera. I'm just going to scan the QR code. All right, so if you go here, you can get the app. And you can see right here the App Store. And I already have mine downloaded, so I'm just going to click Open and now it's saying register new camera. So I'm gonna click on that, and then I'm gonna select the EOS R6 Mark II here, and it's saying recommended, so I'm just gonna click the Bluetooth option there. I'm just gonna hit next here on the camera. All right, it looks like it found it. Now it's pairing, and I'm gonna click yes, I wanna pair. And it's just telling me to compare those numbers. See the 7708, 7708. That looks correct. So I'm going to click Next on the camera. And this is a process. You're kind of going, you're handshaking between the two devices. So there we go. It looks like the connection was established. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to click OK over here. Now you see how it has the iPhone 7708 there, like when this video started. So now I just re-added the iPhone to the camera. So now the app is prompting me for this type of stuff. So I can shoot with the remote control, which is really cool, remote live view shooting, which is what I showed you a minute ago when I had the camera set up in the lab scene. So what I wanna show you this time is just how this app works. So these are the different options you have, and it has a functions here. Now this is where all the different app features are pretty much. So you can click this option, it'll bring you right to the user manual, which is really cool. Then you have location information, so you can push the GPS data from the phone to the camera if you want for photos and stuff. Then you have camera settings, so you can go into the camera, and right now it's connecting to the Wi-Fi. That's what it's actually trying to do right there. So let me hit join. All right, so now I am connected to the camera, and these are the settings. You're kind of limited to the settings that you can program in here, but you can have it set for the time if you want the time to carry over to the camera and that's pretty much all that's in here, daylight savings time and stuff like that. But you have a bunch of other options. You have auto transfer. Now, if you turn this option on, when you take photos from the camera, not using the app, but if you take photos from the camera, like if you're actually pressing the shutter on the camera, it will automatically transfer the files to the smart device. That's what this feature does. And you can reduce the size if you want or do full size. Let's turn that on first, then I can uncheck that. See how that works? So I'm not gonna do that, but that's what this is. And notice how raw files will be saved as JPEG quality, just so you're aware. Now, if you go back up here, you have the remote control. Now this will allow you to control the camera as a remote. So it works really good. You could do for photo and video, but it's not a live view. It's just acting as like a remote control. So this is great for bulb mode, for example, if you're using bulb mode and you want a remote control, or if you just wanna remote control the camera. You know, so it's not going to work now because the camera's pointing at the desk. I will set the camera back up in the lab in a second so you can see it live. 
but you can go in here and you can actually control the playback menu, as you can see here. So check this out, if I zoom out, I can zoom out again. So I'm just using this as a remote control, and now I can control where it's going. So if I have this hooked up to a TV via the HDMI, for example, and I'm sitting on the couch, I can control looking at the photos and files with this remote, which is pretty darn cool, if you ask me. And then, of course, you could zoom in. And then you could move around the image. See that? I mean, that's amazing. So that's how you could use the remote control. I'm just going to click Yes. Um, when you go into these apps, it disconnects on you, which is kind of a pain in the butt. But anyways, now remote live shooting is what I showed you. But let me just show you images on camera here. And it's got to reconnect to the Wi-Fi. And there we have it. So now here's all the images. And what's cool is you have different views. You can sort them in different ways. Um, so for example, if I go to like the view here, it's going to be really small thumbnails. I could change that to larger ones like so. And you can scroll through. And now if I select an image, like I was taking some test photos the other day. Now notice I'm looking at this image. It's given me the option to import right here. So if I want this photo from the camera onto my actual smart device, I just hit import. See? And now you have the option to do original size. This setting is applied only when saving in JPEG format. So if it's a JPEG, it's going to reduce the size. I'm going to click OK. All right, so it's copying them over as JPEG files, like so. But if I go up here into the menu, this is where you can select the different options. So JPEG size and raw image size. See how you can select raw? That's where you're going to want to select that. So it's warning you that your device might not be able to read the raw files, which is totally reasonable, which is why it's converting it to JPEG, so you can share it on social media easily. But if you do want to copy the raw files over, like if you're editing on an iPad tablet, for example, you might want the raw files to copy. This is where you would go to enable that, click OK. Then you have movie save quality, so you can make that original as well if you're copying over movie footage. So I'm just going to X out of there. So now if I select a raw file, let me just select a different one here. Let's try this guy here. Let me do an import. So now it's importing the raw file and you can see how much longer it's taking. See? Much larger file. So that's how it works, guys. It's, it's pretty straightforward. So if you're at a, you know, out and about and you just want to get the uh, image to your phone so you can share it on social media, this app is fantastic for that feature. So let's do open photo app here. And there you have it. There's the photo, and it's given us all the information here. So let me go put the R6 back in the lab, and I'm going to show you how the remote live shooting works in a little bit more detail. All right, so you might get this window might pop up if you're using an iPhone because I'm connected to the camera's Wi-Fi network, but there's no internet. So the camera's just telling me. So just say keep trying Wi-Fi, I guess, to get rid of that screen. But anyways, let's go back into remote live shooting here so I can show you how that works. Now you could use it in either horizontal or vertical format, so it's a little bit easier to see in this format sometimes if you need a larger view. But again, up here are some of the settings that you can change. You could lock the screen orientation, which is nice. Live view rotation. You can do a mirror live view, so if you're filming yourself in selfie mode, for example, this is a great tool. But you might want to mirror it because it looks backwards what you might be used to seeing, so that's what that option is. You got live view magnification and touch AF. I am going to turn touch AF on there. Click X. And this is the AF button here. So when you press that, it's going to focus on whatever the camera thinks it wants to focus on. And because it's seeing a face in the scene, it's focusing on the face. So now if I just touch over here on the quarter, I can hit the AF button. And you can see how it's focusing on the quarter. So we know that the focus is working good. And I can just take the shot. Now, left, let me touch back there. It's like 15 feet away. Focus on that. And now, let me just switch to video mode here and show you how that works. I'm going to focus on the background. And I'm going to hit record. So now it's recording. And now let me focus on the front. And you see that? You see that nice smooth transition? Worked really well. Go to the background. Let's see if I can go to the quarter. All right, it won't do the quarter, but that's understandable. It's pretty tough. Now it'll do the quarter, now that I'm closer. There we go. 
and just hit stop recording. So again, if you're doing like selfie footage, like if you have the camera aimed at you, you'd see your face in the screen right here and you can hit start, stop. You'll know that the focus is dead on. If we go down here where the arrow is, here's all the different video options. So we have a bunch of different options here. You got audio options, you got your video formats here so you can change your video formats. You have a self timer here, you can turn on and off. Autofocus area, you can change that. I'm using the whole screen right now, but you can use you know, just a, a smaller focus area if you want, which is pretty cool. So I usually use that one, for example, and you could then dial in your focus a little bit more accurately if you use that. I'm just gonna leave it on that for default though. So again, that's pretty much how this app works, guys. Like I said, it's fairly straightforward and it does work quite well. It works significantly better than the Sony Imaging Edge app. But I gotta say, I am impressed with how good this works, especially the touch focus uh, for photo and video. That's really nice to use. And also having the Bluetooth controller for when you wanna use bulb mode. So this way you don't have to buy a controller, you know, you can just use your smartphone. And best of all, when you're doing selfie stuff and you need to make sure that the focus is right and you're standing in front of the camera, it's kind of a pain in the butt. You have to walk over the camera, hit record, then come around the back of the camera. Like this solves that for you. You can just pop the app open and start recording while you're in front of the camera when you have the perfect scene and you're in the right spot and you could check to make sure it looks good on the device. So that is um, pretty much it for this quick tutorial, guys. I hope you got something out of this and uh, I will catch up with you next time. All right, take care.